If a question says work out the theoretical yield, what does that mean? How do you work out theoretical yield? What is yield? What does it mean when they say theoretical? We're going to get into all of that in the video. Let's jump right in. First of all, yield is the amount of product that is formed during a chemical reaction. As you should know already, when we have a chemical reaction, we have stuff that is called reactants. Then we have an arrow and then we have stuff that is called products. So reactants are the stuff that we start with, products are the things that we end with, it's the stuff that we're making. So yield tells me how much of the products am I forming during a chemical reaction. Theoretical yield. Now what this means is in theory what we should produce. It's the amount of product that we can get or that we should get during a reaction. It is what is expected that we get depending on the stoichiometry or the calculations that we do. Say for example, you write a mass test and your mass test is out of 50. Theoretically, if you know your work, if you listen to your teacher, if you practice, if you studied, if you worked hard, in theory, you can get 50 out of 50. So your theoretical yield is 50. It's what you should get, it's what we expect to get, it's what we reach for. The actual yield is what actually happens. It is what actually happens in a chemical reaction. What we actually get and what we theoretically think we should get often differs in a chemical reaction. Most of the time we actually produce less than what we theoretically think we will produce. A nice way to remember this is that theoretical yield is always calculated using our stoichiometric calculations, using our mole ratio and calculations in order to determine how much we should be producing. So we may need to calculate theoretical yield in moles, mass, volume, it just depends on the question. And of course, we need theoretical yield in order to calculate percentage yield, which I will do in another video in this playlist, but just quickly, Percentage yield takes your actual yield. So it's what actually happened in the lab when you did the experiments and what was it's what was actually produced. Theoretical yield is what we calculated. It is what should have been produced according to the stoichiometry, according to the mole ratios, according to the calculation. And we times it by 100 to get a percentage. Here are the steps in order to calculate theoretical yield. First of all, we will have to determine which reagent or reactant is limiting if necessary. In grade 10 especially, they will tell you which one is an excess and then you will know which one is limiting. But in grade 11 and in grade 12, you often need to determine which one is limiting. The reagent or the reactant that is limiting is very important because in step two, we need to calculate the moles of the limiting reagent. Then we use the mole ratio to go from reactant moles to that of the product and then we convert the moles of the product to whichever unit is necessary. So a very very basic example of this would be the following. So to produce H2O where we react three moles of oxygen, so oxygen is obviously O2, with excess hydrogen. What is the theoretical yield of water that can be produced? So first things first, hydrogen and oxygen are what we call the reactants. And then obviously water is my product. I want to know the theoretical yield of the product. How much water can be produced in theory according to calculations? Step one says determine which reagent or reactant is limiting. Which of these two, this one or this one, which one is limiting? Now in this question, it's very easy. It's very straightforward because I tell you that we're reacting three moles of oxygen, so I'm going to say N is equal to three for oxygen, with excess hydrogen. So what they're telling you in this question is that the hydrogen is in excess. What this means is I have over enough hydrogen. So if this one is in excess, the other one is immediately limiting. Determine which reagent is limiting, it's the oxygen. Calculate the moles of the limiting reagent. In this question, remember I've given you an easy one. We do not need to calculate the moles because they tell me that I have three moles of oxygen. The step two is done. Use the mole ratio to convert moles of reactants to moles of product. So what I mean by this is we know that oxygen is limiting. 
which means we know that all of this oxygen is going to be used up. We use a mole ratio, very important to go watch the video that I have in this playlist on mole ratios if you don't know what I'm talking about. We are going from oxygen to water. In order to do that, we have to use a mole ratio. So we're going from O2 to H2O. We get the mole ratio by looking at the big numbers in front of the compound. So H2O has a 2 in front of it. So that's a 2. Oxygen, do you see a number here? I don't see a number, which means that the number is 1. So we're going to use this mole ratio to convert the moles of oxygen to moles of my product. So how many moles of oxygen did the question tell me I have? The question told me I have three moles of oxygen. So under oxygen, I'm going to put a three. I need to now work out how many moles of H2O I will produce. How do I get from one to two? I need to multiply by two, which means I need to multiply three by two. That's one way to do it. Therefore, I will produce six moles of H2O. Another way to work with ratios is you're looking for this. You divide on the side times on the top. I remember it like that because divide, side, those things rhyme, times on the top. So you go three divided by one times two. And that also gives me six. What is the theoretical yield of water that can be produced? Answer in moles. Six moles of water can be produced. Please take note, the things that go in the mole ratio is the limiting reagent, so in this case it's oxygen, and the product that we're looking for. Let's do example two, which is going to be more difficult, slightly more difficult, and then example three, which is even more difficult. So this example, by the way, comes from my stoichiometry study guide that I have for sale on my website. You can purchase it. It's 100 pages. It comes with 50 worked examples. So if you want more practice, you want to do well in this section, this is available for grade 10s to grade 12. Example 2 says 0.08 grams of calcium carbonate, that's this one, reacts with excess hydrochloric acid, that's this one, according to the following balanced equation. Your equations always have to be balanced. That's something very important that I forgot to mention in example one. Generally, they give it to you balanced, but if not, you have to balance it. Calculate the theoretical yield of carbon dioxide produced at STP. Give the volume, which means at the end, we're going to have to convert to volume. Step one, determine which reagent is limiting. Again, in this question, they told me this is an excess. Hydrochloric acid is in excess, which means that this is limiting. So I don't need to work it out. They tell me that this one is limiting. That's great. This is an example of something that you can get in grade 10 all the way to grade 12. So even if you don't really understand what limiting and excess means in grade 10, you just need to know that this is the one that I care about. This is the one that is going to be put in my mole ratio later on. That will be my mole ratio later on. The limiting the one that is limiting with the product. Always, 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 always. Okay, but we'll deal with that later. Calculate the moles of the limiting reagent. They tell me 0 0.08 grams of calcium carbonate. That is mass. That is M, baby M. I need to co convert this to moles. How do you convert mass to moles? You should know that we're going to use this formula. My mass as given 0, 0.08 grams, my big M, my molar mass, is the molar mass of this compound, CaCO3. Where do we get that from? In the periodic table. So you're going to go 40 plus carbon is 12 plus oxygen is 16 but there's three of them. So you should get 100. The number of moles of calcium carbonates my calculator gives it to me in scientific notation, which is fine. It is 8 times 10 to the negative 4. But this is also correct. Now, we worked out the moles of the limiting reagent. So we've done step 2. Use the mole ratio to convert moles of the reactant to moles of the product. Now remember, we're going from the limiting reactant or the limiting reagent, CaCO3. 
and we need to work out the moles of the product. And remember, in this case, there are three products. The only product I care about in this question is carbon dioxide. Why? Because they said calculate the theoretical yield of carbon dioxide. Now, where do we get the mole ratio from again? It's the big numbers in the balanced chemical equation. Now, this chemical equation is balanced. This big number over here is 1. This big number over here is 1. I know you're saying or thinking, huh, there's no big numbers there. If there's no big number, we assume it's a 1. What this means is if I'm going to use up 0, 0,0008 moles of calcium carbonate, I will produce 0, 0,0008 moles of CO2. It's a one to one ratio. So this is the number of moles of CO2 that is produced. This is technically the theoretical yield of CO2, but it's given in moles. But in the question, we do not want the theoretical yields, yield in moles. They say theoretical yield of carbon dioxide produced at STP give the volume. So we need to then co convert moles to volume, which is V. And we're working with a gas, a gas at STP. I have videos going over gases at STP, but what you should know is that we're going to use this formula. As soon as you see STP, you know you need to use the formula with Vm in it. As soon as you see Vm, you should know, and if you see STP, you should know that Vm is a constant. It's 22,4. Volume is what I'm looking for. Number of moles, we actually know. It's 0, 0,0008. We're working out volume. So all you need to do is you need to say 0, 0,0008 times 22.4 to get volume, which is 0, 0,01792. Of course, you can round that off to two decimal places, 0, 0,02 cubic decimeters. This is the theoretical yield given in volume of CO2 that can be produced in this reaction. In the next video, I will cover example three, which is the most difficult out of the three. This example is for grade 11s and grade 12s that work with limiting reagents. The grade 10s, you do not need to watch the second part of this video, but you do need to be able to work out examples like the one that I've done before. So this is definitely a grade 10 example. Grade 11s and grade 12s, I will see you in the very next video. Let's go.